Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. Singles, some, for the first time, have turn to this virtual dating thing that you've probably heard about this year when the usual ways of meeting people for many have disappeared or at least dissipated. It's funny because a lot of my extroverts are having a really hard time with this whole virtual thing and my introverts are having a blast. They're like, welcome to my world. So it's almost like how do the worlds collide where we can all meet as one together and actually connect? You know, online dating sites report record use as lonely singles look for someone to enrich their lives for a day, a month, or even forever. Dating, as it would seem, is simpler in some ways, right? Like we just have the computer to connect with, yet more complex than others. In addition to regular fear of rejection, there's now also the fear of infection. So it has many people paralyzed and feeling very disconnected. But here's the thing I found, and this is with just the people that I've worked with, is that there's almost this paradoxical effect happening because we are forced to actually slow down and really pay attention to what we want, how we connect, And because of that, there's an actual acceleration in relationships and connection. It's a a strange phenomenon that is happening that none of us could predict, but I am finding that people are building more emotional relationships because of it. And virtual dating has everything to do with it. Online dating has been around for a long time. Obviously, people have used it before, but how we're using it has really changed. So before the pandemic, I noticed a lot of people were swiping, they were numbing out, meeting without really connecting, relying on that physical connection. But now you really have to earn the right to meet someone out. So I'm coaching people how to use online platforms to build emotional connections before going out and meeting, consequently, people who are getting into more meaningful connections and relationships. So As some of you might have heard, I did this amazing virtual event back in the fall. It was called the Flirt Immersion Experience. And there I had women participating in hands-on exercises and interactive games to hone in on their flirt and dating skills. And it included the secrets on attraction, body language, conversation, how to give good conversation, and how to get out of the friend zone for good. Now, there was a man panel there. We did mock dating, and everyone watched this live date, and we ended with virtual speed dating. And the men then filled out these first impression assessments so that the women could really understand how they came across on dates and where their blind spots were. It was really great to see that the women who was part of my coaching program were able to synthesize everything they had been working on in the event And I kid you not, like three of them actually went on to date after that. So there's something to this. Virtual dating can work, especially when used right, with intention, focus, and yes, a little bit of fun. And if you are listening to this and feeling burnt out with a 2D dating, then I hope you will get inspired by this conversation because with a little coaching and guidance, the right platform, you can use this time to work on some dating skills that were probably even hard for you before the pandemic hit. And I have a special guest on today to help us talk about some trends and ideas around online dating. Now, He is the co-founder, CEO of the video speed dating app, Filtered Off. Filtered Off, this is so good. This is so cool. And it has been featured in publications such as New York Times, BBC, and the hit number one on the On Product Hunt. I wonder what that is. I'm going to have to ask him about it. Previously, he ran and sold the dating blog, Top Romp, which covered dating hacks and apps for the modern dater. He's a TEDx speaker, and his passions lie in technology, health, and creating authentic connections. When he is not working, he loves to travel the world, listen to podcasts, and work out. Welcome, Zach Schlein. Did I get it right? 
You got it right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hi, Zach. How are you? Hey, Kim. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I was just, I was really excited about this conversation. Obviously, it's like something we're all talking about when it comes to how to connect with people. And it's funny because I did that event before I even knew you. And now we're going to mm-hmm. combine forces and do a event together. But I would, I don't know. I, I would love just to hear about your personal story and journey and like what got you into all this. Yeah. I mean, so I've been into online dating for a while now. I'm 30. And I've always been, at least when I've been single, I'm single now, but I've had some girlfriends in between. But when I was single, I've always loved the idea to connect with someone that I could never have met um, potentially just uh, through serendipity. Or So yeah, online dating has always attracted me. And uh, I would go on these first dates in person. And I quickly realized just how uh, just annoying it could also be just when you meet in person for that first time and you don't have chemistry or you're not attracted. And it's like, well, the photos, the texting, it was so great, but now we're meeting and it's not that great. And it was about probably six years back. I started asking my dates if they'd be open to video chatting beforehand. And most would say no, but the ones that did, I realized very quickly just how much better it was. And Uh, You really got to see their personality. You got to see what they actually look like, their mannerisms. And as the years went by, there was really no app that was offering any sort of video dating, uh, video first dating component and decided to uh, pursue it myself. And I love your combination. Like you are a tech person and you're into like connections and relationships. It's the perfect marriage for this kind of thing. So I, I love that. I have a question. So have you, and this could be a personal experience as well, or people who are using um, the app, is anyone finding it hard to be themselves? You know, because it is a video and not everyone gives good video, let's be honest. You know, some people are better in person, some people are better texters. And I just wondered like how people are with that. Yeah, I think what it comes down to is, yeah, there are people that are nervous about jumping on a video date. I think it is definitely shifted since pre-pandemic. Now everyone who's on Zoom with friends and family and work, people are much more comfortable hopping on with a complete stranger. But if you are nervous, it's completely normal. I mean, you're typically nervous meeting up in person on a first date, those first date jitters. And the reality is those first date, first date jitters and being vulnerable is what allows you to connect and have a great uh, potential romantic connection. Yeah. You know, what's interesting that I'm finding is that, you know, cause I'm all about vulnerability and I feel like when you're vulnerable, you make better connections, you know, you're just more human. And it's interesting cause I'm watching all these celebrities go on like these zoom interviews and, you know, we're seeing their homes in the background and we're showing up as more of our authentic selves because we're in our element, we're in our habitat, you know, and, and I, there's an element of that, that vulnerability piece that's so real that I also think is helping. Do you, I mean, do you find that too? Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's the beauty with video dating is you can really get to know the person quickly. It's pure communication. After chatting with someone on video a couple times, you kind of get a feel for who that person is. And when I say a couple times, perhaps uh, a couple hours, um, you'll get a feel and understanding of who that person is and kind of what they represent and if they're a potential uh, fit for you. Yeah. Do, are there certain trends that you're seeing right now with the online dating world and in conjunction with your app? Yeah. I mean, online dating has never been more popular. I think post COVID, once the pandemic of AIDS, I think, first of all, people are going to continue video dating. Um, it's because people are now so comfortable being on video. Yeah. And there are a lot of people who are not online dating right now, because they're like, what's the point? I can't meet in person anyways. Or um, so I think post COVID, even more people will be online dating, and more people will be video dating and video dating is here to stay. And it will be treated as kind of like the first date before the first date. I know. I I think that 
is very true because there's so many people who are waiting. They're like, oh, I'm just going to wait till the pandemic's over and then I'll just meet people out and about. But I agree with you. I think this trend is here to stay. And I think it's a much safer way of dating. And quite honestly, it gives you a chance to get to know somebody to see if you even want to meet that person, you know? Mm -hmm. So I... I, I love your whole concept. I was wondering if you could share a little more about Filter Off because I, I I think it's fantastic. Thanks. Yeah, so it's a uh, video speed dating app. It's available on Android, iOS, and web. And Filter Off offers virtual speed dating events. Events can be local. A local event could be like an LA date night or a New York or a Miami date night. And we're all over the world now. Or it could be a community-based event. And a community-based event can be from an organization or just a nonprofit or a religious organization that wants to start their own, or even a matchmaker that wants to start their own event and for their community to meet one another. So we've had events like Black Single Professionals, we've had vegan events, we've so lots of different communities creating their own events. And it's just a really great way to bring your community together um, and meet like minded individuals that are single. And now with the flirt immersion experience, we're going to be partnering and doing 100%. this together. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and were you going to also add, so yeah, so, and I'm happy to like walk you through kind of how it works. So once yeah. you RCP to one of these events, <clears throat> excuse me, so the community base, they require a code. So it's just for your community that can join the public events. Anyone can join if they're in that location. And let's say you RCP to an event. It'll be added to your calendar. An hour before the event begins, Filter Off will ask you to confirm that you'll be attending the night. Once you confirm, Filter Off will start scheduling your speed dates for you. You may have up to, let's say, seven virtual speed dates at night, one at maybe 8 o'clock, one at 8.04, 8.08, and so on and so forth. When 8 o'clock rolls around, you press start date, and you're entered into a live video chat with your date on the Filter Off app. And when the date concludes, it'll ask you whether you like each other or not. And then you move to your next date. At the end of the event, you could see if you matched with anyone. And if you did, you can message them or video call them all on the platform. So you don't even have to exchange ah, personal information off the bat. That's super cool. So, you, I mean, I know a lot of the online sites are doing that too, where they have the, the interface of the video right there. So it makes it just really easy and seamless also, you know, just to go right from that experience. Have you? Um, seen any like relationships happen and like progress and like how can people use it to to progress yeah i mean so to answer your first question yeah i we've had we've created four engagements and two marriages since the pandemic <gasps> and granted yeah oh my yeah. god i love it and granted we actually got out of beta a month before the pandemic um so we are fairly new and uh good timing as well and um, yeah, I mean, I recently had a user email me who was like, hey, I've been on OkCupid and Coffee Meets Bagel for a couple of years. And I would always try to like get an idea of like their personality. And it was just so hard. And then I jumped on a filter off event. He was part of one of our uh, religious communities that runs events. And he's like, I went on seven speed dates. And in about 30 minutes, um, I ended up matching with two women. And a couple of weeks later, one became my girlfriend. And they're like very Aww. happy together. So Aww. sometimes I get, yeah, some emails of really positive stories, which is really neat. And um, yeah, but the progression typically works like this. I mean, you go on an event. Um, let's say you get a match. You then message them. Hey, it was great chatting with you. Do you want to set up another video call? Then you hop on a video, another video call and filter off. This time it'll be much longer than, um, let's say, three or five minutes. It may be an hour this time. And then you may exchange personal information and then maybe hop on another video call. And this time maybe it's off the app and then, then it just progresses that way. It's super cool. Cause I know a lot of people are just getting so burnt out of the regular format of the online sites. And this just gives it a more energetic and exciting element to it. And honestly, just that possibility of really having that authentic connection is it, to me, it's huge. You know, I, before I met you, I told you, like, I had this whole concept in my head and I can't believe like, here you are swooping in like Superman with your cape, <laughs> really like having this platform that all these people can connect. Well, I know I've seen 
And I, I'm curious your thoughts or the stories you've heard. There's also a lot of mistakes that people are making. Have Have you seen some of those? And like, what I mean, should people avoid? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think the common ones are just be yourself and um, be curious. And um, yeah, and maybe not talk the whole time, but ask a few questions. We have some before your date begins, you could review their profile. You could see their fun facts and their bios. The photos oh, yeah. are at, you, the photos are blurred, but you can actually see their bios beforehand. So if they say, oh, I love skating, you could ask them about it. Or I love skiing. You could say, oh, where have you gone? And you could relate. And then we also have icebreakers in the apps. So you could play games. Um, but some like uh, things to not do, obviously, I mean, like don't take it from lying in bed on your first date. Oh, or, my God. Um, <laughs> or be shirt or be shirtless um on your first date. So I think it's just like some normal basic things. And if you're if you're in your apartment, don't have like laundry everywhere that someone could see. Like if it's just all over the place, like just look somewhat professional and um you don't have to dress up crazy, but like look good. Don't look like a uh total slob and um yeah, have fun with it. And, and you're going on a number of dates. So it, it will be fun. Well, I just want to expand on that, what you just said, because obviously this is like where I really help people. And some of the things that I've noticed that people do, it's funny that you mentioned, like, don't be lying down while you're (laughs) on the couch, you know, talking to people. There was a client that I was working with and she's like, Kim, I, I really like this guy until I saw him in the video and the entire time he was reclined, he had a shirt off and he, like, I saw half of his face, you know, and it, so it was like, what you're calling is like pretty basic. It's amazing how many people don't think of that, especially if you're not used to video, right? Like if you're, you just used to phone, maybe you're not aware of that first impression, but that first impression stage is so crucial with this video dating. I think with your platform, people get to practice making a good first impression. And, you know, nowadays the research says it only takes seven seconds. And I bet you it's even quicker now. Like that was even a couple months ago. And within that seven seconds, people are making judgments and assumptions based on Mm. your facial expressions, your body language, and also what you wear. So Mm -hmm. it's, and, and is like easy concept as it is, sometimes people make it more complex and and they don't pay attention to it or they make it harder on themselves with that first impression and can it really kill a date so i just mm-hmm. encourage everything that you just said and back you up with what i'm seeing out there and what i help people with and that is you know make sure that you have a good background make sure you have good lighting make sure you have a good microphone um that you can the audio is also really important i was going to ask you does your app have like a a way to like enhance the audio or is there any like yeah i mean you could take that? it from your computer so you could do it from oh. your yeah your workspace yeah. oh so you can do it on the computer that's a good yeah. thing that you we just have a said. web app yeah yeah we have a web app as well it's on it's available for every device Okay. Oh, that's even better because then we women, we can use like the HD camera. We can do all sorts of filters. <laughs> I love no, it. No filters. No but, filters. Uh, <laughs> you can definitely enhance the, the quality and you can be comfortable yes. sitting down. and But not it. lying down. Sitting down, but not, not lying, lying down. down. Right. Exactly. exactly. Right. Big distinction. Yeah. Yeah. And I think another tip that I would say is, you know, wearing um, color and vibrant vibrant colors if you're a woman and guys you know also make sure that you are having like a nice shirt on and groom yourself mm-hmm. have mm-hmm. the good lighting a lot of men don't pay attention to that you know they're paying attention to what the women are wearing but guess what we pay attention to you guys so of course that is a super important thing um well yeah and and then i would the other thing that i wanted to ask you and talk about is Have you seen a difference in the quality of the connections with people? Like, are people talking about that? They're feeling like better about their matches, like on this platform versus just like the traditional one? Yeah. I mean, to give you a stat, um, like we know trust is being built on filter off and connection. We have a 25% match rate higher than that on virtual speeding events. Um, In comparison, in comparison, the data shows like for, uh, swipe apps for men, it's less than 1% match rate. And for women, it's about 10%. 
So I think when you uh, take the profile out of it and you make it video first, you're you're seeing a human, right? And mm -hmm. it's um, you're not basing it off of their photos and their witty bio. You're basing it off of the connection you create, and I think um, that's really led to a greater uh, match rate because you're also connecting with other people that are more serious about online dating that they're actually getting on the video. Yeah. Is there like a geolocation type of device where you can see like where people live and set like a radius like the other apps do? So, so our, yeah, so two things. So our events, so let's say um, a New York City date night, you have to be in a certain radius to attend oh, that event okay. <clears throat> or a London date night, et cetera, et cetera. We also have another feature that's free. It's called Matchmaker that sets you up on three dates every day based off your preferences. So it could be radius. Oh. It could be, do you have children? Have you been um, divorced or widowed? And what you're looking for, different preferences as well. Ethnicity, religion, you could add deal breakers. We show you your reach and then you can match with people based off of your preferences. Oh, and again, we cool push thing. you to video as well. The date will expire after five days unless you video chat with them. So, Oh, I love that. You're like really pushing it. Because otherwise, a lot of people yeah. just won't do it, especially if you're yeah. shy. And that incentivizes people to, to hop on the video. That's very And cool. it also removes any sort of scammer, any sort of catfish who says, hey, let's just message. Because why would you be on a video dating app if you say just a message? And the reality is, that is a major issue on dating apps. A lot of these dating apps, that are scammers. It's um, people looking for money and um, catfishes. So it's mm -hmm. catfish. So it's it just kind of just streamlines the process and takes a lot of the BS out of it. That is a really good point. Yeah, because if the, somebody doesn't show up on video, then yeah, they're, yeah. you got to question that. Have there been any stats or like talks about maybe like complaints that people are having with their date, like, oh, he didn't give a good conversation. Oh, he didn't flirt or she didn't flirt. Like, are there like certain common things that you're hearing that people should really work on when it comes to video dating? Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest, I wouldn't even call it an issue. We don't get that many complaints, but it's if someone hides behind the camera, like ah. we'll investigate and then we could always uh, remove them. Like, we don't want people who are not going on video or, and that's not typically an issue. We don't really, but I mean, the complaints are, here's the thing. You get email. I get emails every day. I, you usually hear from issues. You don't hear from successes. And I tell organizers True. that let's say you have a hundred people and two didn't have a good time. Well, you had a 98% success rate. That's pretty damn good. You may not hear from the 98, but the two you will hear from. <laughs> so I try to keep it with a gram of salt and we just continue to work in, build out new features based off of kind of user behavior and also user feedback. So we do take all of that into consideration, but sometimes it's just out of our control. Well, and from a coaching standpoint, I will add around that is that, you know, if one or two people say that they didn't connect with you for whatever reason, that's their opinion. I mean, not everyone's going to click or connect, but if you're hearing this from multiple people over time, I actually think that this kind of dating is really good for people to hone in on their own skills. Because if you hear it over and over and over again, it's not it's not just opinion, it's a fact. <laughs> then you got to take a look sure. at how you can shift it and change it. And so like, if you use it, I can see that, this could be also a learning tool for a lot of people and why things just weren't progressing even before this existed. A hundred percent. I mean, you, you're potentially going on, uh, let's say you attend um, a few events every week. I mean, you could be literally jumping on uh, over 30 dates potentially in one week. And yeah. sometimes people won't even go on one date a month. So now it's just constant practice. In the beginning, you may feel uncomfortable. You may feel rusty. But by event number three, you may feel, wow, I've gotten maybe coaching from you or or you've just been practicing and just working up um, and getting more comfortable. And yeah, you could really use it as a, uh, a training tool as well. Completely. I, I really like, I know for my people, I'm going to be using it a lot for that. And also as a potential to meet other people. And, you know, I, I think that there's a lot of value with what you just said about the practice. Cause I, 
I don't know if you even know this, but I define confidence as experience. I don't believe that there's one person out there who's just not confident. It's usually if there's an area they don't feel good in, it's because they haven't had practice or positive exposure around something. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so if we could use this to really, you know, gain more confidence in the area of flirting, dating, relating, conversations, first impressions, like all of that stuff, this could be like, I, I feel like a game changer for so many people and then really give them an opportunity to meet someone special. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's the beauty and why we focused very much so on community and having community-based events is let's say you are a runner and maybe you're not so confident, but if you love to run and there's a running event that you can attend or an event you can create, you can meet other runners and such an easy way to connect because you have these similar uh, interests. And um, yeah, so that makes it easier um, when it comes to dating. Yeah, I... I, people get mad at me sometimes because I, I just don't believe in like true single events per se. Cause I think it adds like a, this weird pressure on people. Like, and then everyone gets in the room and everyone's looking at like who's single, who's not. And you know, the genders are always like lopsided, you know, there's either more women or more men, but when you're coming at a place from, like you said, passions and hobbies and community combined with a dating element. Yeah. Like to me, this makes sense. This is a good like way to build out what I call your dating portfolio. You know, it's just like financial sure. portfolio, you know? Yeah. hundred percent. And I think what it comes down to is when you attend a lot of those events, they can also feel overwhelming because you totally see so many people. Yes. And with filter off, it's one-on-one. You're not, the only people you're seeing are the people you're going on dates with. Um, so it doesn't have that feeling of being overwhelmed and our algorithm balances it out. So um, you will, let's say you get a certain amount of dates and someone else will get a different amount of dates based off of gender preference, age preference, the number of people attending. So uh, we have a lot of things in the back end that are working just to make a really great experience for all users. Oh, that's so cool. I cannot wait to do this event with you. Like, I'm just so excited. Great. Yeah. I know, I know. Um, do you have any like last words or parting words of wisdom that you wanted to leave everyone with around all this? Yeah, I think from an online dating space, whether or not you use filter off, like try to hop on video um, as quickly yes. as possible. I mean, the worst thing to that you do, like time is so important. And if you're just in like a, a great, and I put that in quote, texting conversation with someone for three weeks, you think they're amazing and you've never actually spoken to them. And then you finally wait after that, getting to the fourth week to hop on video and you realize, wow, I have zero interest. And that happens far too often. So what I'm trying to say is hop on video chat, maybe after the third day or the first week, like just, just go for it. Because last thing you want, it's good to get to a no as well. And it's good to kind of, uh, figure out who you're not interested in as well. And you don't want to be caught up with people that you're not potentially not interested in. So that is so get, true. Get on video. Get on video at the end of the day. Yeah. I in fact just talked to the client and she was on a chat, like a normal DM exchange. I want to say it was two weeks straight. I said, and you never got on the phone. You never got on video. And she's like, well, no, he never asked me. And, and here's my belief. I believe both parties have a responsibility and approachability and the way that we connect. And it's, it's how we conversate. It's how we get from the text exchange to the video, to the in-person. And that's really Mm -hmm. the progression now. And what I love about your platform, it takes that weirdness out of it because a lot of people don't know how to ask for the video date or, you know, so it, it goes right to the connection. And so when in doubt, just video, <laughs> I love it. Well, Zach, it was so great. Like having you on here. I'm excited to do this event with you and, uh, see you in clubhouse. Yeah, no. definitely. Uh, <laughs> likewise. It was a great time being here. Yeah. Thank you. So thanks for joining me today. This has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, of course, Kimmy Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. Make sure you go to my site, KimmySeltzer.com. And if you keep asking yourself, 
why you are still single and you're looking for that connection, I have some fun things for you. First, as always, you can join my free Facebook group. It's for women. It's called Love Makeover Insiders so that you can get motivated and inspired by other women who are working on their love life just like you. So that's a no-brainer. Join that. Second, I am excited to announce that on March 20th, I am doing another flirt immersion experience like I was talking about before. And this time I'm partnering up with Zach and his team at Filter Off. It's a virtual event that is going to teach you everything you need to know to help you stand out and finally start flirting, attracting the guy that is right for you. And it is a ton of fun, as I was talking about before. You're going to have hands-on exercises to learn the art of flirting and dating with interactive games. We do mock dating. We even have a man panel come in. And a speed dating at the end of the event where you can put all this into practice with men I've hand-selected hand selected by moi. So check out the link in the show notes and sign up for it now. I'm keeping this event small. So you got to grab your spot and we do have some left, but it will be limited. And remember, it starts with you working on yourself is working on the better version of you so that you attract something different in your life. And stay tuned until next week with more tips and how to feel and look fabulous every day. <laughs>